defense against a violent ex-boyfriend, the liberal thing to do? That's the question that a lot of people need to think about. She, Carol, went, you know, she was stabbed to death by her ex-boyfriend in her driveway in 2015 in New Jersey. She was unarmed. She was defenseless, you know. So now the question is, isn't empowering Carol's right to self-defense a violent against a violent ex-boyfriend the liberal thing to do? And the question, the answer would to most of you be yes. You know, if she trying to defend herself, ooh, cool dude, you know, that, you know, she trying to defend herself, you know, she should, the process should have been a little bit faster. At least that's what I'm thinking. You know, a minority's right is what we about to get into now of this protection section. It say like just after the American Civil War, court manufacturing rent print as Boston Abe Lincoln may have freed all men, but Sam Court made them equal. We now see this statement as clever, even quaint, but at the time it was considered inflammatory in many eras. During the chaotic Reconstruction years, many Southern states enacted black codes to make it illegal for blacks to own guns. Frederick Douglass wrote to, in his autobiography, The Life of Times, Frederick Douglass in 1881, that American liberty depends upon the ballot box, the jury box, and the cartridge box. Wow. And I see many people would have never known that that saying would have even been stated in there. See how they implied everybody. They went from England to in the African American community to Frederick Douglass. I got to read that one again for you one more time. It said during the chaotic Reconstruction years, many Southern states enacted black codes to make it illegal for blacks to own guns. But Frederick Douglass wrote in his autobiography, The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass in 1881, that American liberty depends upon the ballot box, the jury box, and the cartridge box. Laws preventing free blacks from owning guns served an evil purpose. In 1892, the writer Ida B. Wells noted in a work on lynching that the only times an Afro-American who was assaulted got away has been when he had a gun and used it in self-defense. Wells also said that a Winchester rifle should have a place of honor in every black home and it should be used for that protection, which the law refuses to give. Much later, this advice was taken by Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. King had been denied the right to have a concealed firearm, but he kept guns for his defense anyway. Also, it's not an accident but a critique of our time that led plaintiff in a Supreme Court case that explicitly applied Second Amendment rights to all states, local governments, was Otis McDonald, a black man who was tired of being preyed upon by thugs in the inner city of Chicago. Wow. Now, they keyed in. So here we go. We think that the NRA doesn't key in into the African-American community. But many people don't know about the writer Ida B. Wells when she was talking about, you know, they was talking about what she said. They talked about what Martin Luther King Jr. Most people don't even know that Martin Luther King Jr., you know, was denied the right to a concealed firearm, you know, because of him being uh, a black man at that you understand? Then it says to, I mean, then they said they looked into Otis McDonald, a black man who was tired of being preyed upon by thugs in the inner city of Chicago. So, you know, again, it's always truthful to get facts. You understand? And this is it's very vital to people, you know, you know, so, um, these are some little, that, that's some little touchy stuff I thought I would share with you, you know, 
I didn't I didn't really get to read as far as I took you just now, you know, but it just goes to show you, you know, those people who don't know much about the Second Amendment and other people who have, you know, stood for certain rights, you know, they do not, uh, they don't get it. They don't, they do not get it here, you know. Uh, they have many people who have been uh, doing great things. So you got to really be alert in these hours for the time we going through. It's time to be educated, you know. And they even got one with Mr. Brock, you know. Uh, right here, they got a good one with him here about the surge and in interest of women. So there's certain uh things that have been going on, you know, and there's women against gun violence and all of that. So it's a whole host of stuff. So pretty much in a nutshell, man, it is people standing for, you know, justice for all, you know, in any particular arena, you know, and you want to uh, be informed, you know, knowledge is powerful. You know, what you knew, what you know can help you to avoid, you know, situations that are going on. You don't uh, want to too much deal with too much other stuff, you know. And I'm really thinking about just doing a basic, you know, teaching on these fundamentals to people that want to change, not be a through radio, but in person, you know what I'm saying, in large or small settings for those people that may be interested in uh, protecting themselves as law-abiding citizens, because in the times that we live in, we do, we need people to see the facts in this thing. You know, if a black man, you know, got to stand up against thugs in the community and stuff like that. Come on, man. You know, and then if Frederick Douglass and Ida B. Wells and people that have been profound in the African-American community even be brought up in conversation, most people would have never even mentioned that Martin Luther King Jr. applied, you know, to have uh, weapons uh, uh, a concealed weapon permit, but then he still had actual weapons. You know what I'm saying? So most people would have never knew that and don't know all the ins and outs of situations because, you know, uh, even as has been told that Harriet Tubman had a rifle when she was delivering, you know, uh, the slaves from the Underground Railroad. You understand? So, uh, and she had help in the up northern places, which that's not a hidden fact. That's a known fact. You know, she had to have something to bring her out and stated are tr known to be fact, you know, given by other sources, you know. So, um, I don't see why so many other people bash, you know, the uh, uh, law-abiding organizations that are fighting for your particular right. I don't understand that. I don't understand if, you know, we didn't have the right to do this. Why, you know, 
it's such a big deal when we have the chance to. Uh, we had every other right we fought for as a people. And I'm talking about communities. I'm talking about amongst the people, too. You know, it's, it's even other races that still don't have this right to this day. That other people are fighting for for freedom for all of law, law-abiding law citizens. Not just any particular people, but law-abiding citizens. What's wrong with saying that law-abiding citizens should have the right to bear arms. You know, not the unstable and incapable and not people who are just, just trying to go on a rampage to do stuff, but people that's willing to uh, protect themselves, others, and the communities that they live in. You know, it, it should the burden should be, shouldn't be on one sector of people. It should be on each and every one of us. Actually, the real responsibility is supposed to be on each particular household and other people have to carry the burdens because people have made the choices to do what they did. And in most communities, especially amongst the African-American communities, African-Americans have tended to make, you know, slightly um other choices that for one reason left them out of the affairs of their household you know what I'm saying and for their loved ones because they chose otherwise to go do something different and then it left the woman open to have to defend herself you know and then she began you know when a man tried to get back in she now got that masculinity you know because she taking her out of the man doing a protection you know, because the man is not thinking wisely, you know, even though the woman particularly doesn't want to. She now has to arm herself because of assailants. So she, you know, doesn't want to be made a target to, you know, any injustices. And this is what we have to fight for every day. We're fighting for the rights of all mankind to be free, not just some particularly. And some people don't want it to happen. They like, man, we want people bound, but who the sun set free is free indeed. So not only will Jesus free people, I got to free people. I got to help people, you know, to make decisions that are law abiding choices, not so much as evil choices. We don't need no evil uh, people doing these things. And we need solutions. And these are solutions today that we're uh, I'm, I'm concerned about us indoctrinating ourselves with. If we're going to indoctrinate ourselves with something, let's indoctrinate ourselves with certain truths. That's what we want to do. Indoctrinate ourselves with certain truths. Forget all of the naysayers and all that other stuff. But let's educate oneself on truths and mannerisms that we need to have. You know, if not now, then when? You know, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. You know, and a person... Like I said, my own personal testimony, I came through a whole historical life of injustices. But that made me take the stand that I now take with my own radio station, which is my civil rights movement. You understand? This is my civil rights, WCJC, Digital Broadcasting Company, now becomes my civil rights movement where, you know, this is my platform I'm on, you know, and uh, I'm, you know, accountable to the uplifting of a people to know the difference. You know, what you don't know could just possibly destroy you, too. You know, and what you are aware of will keep you in a way of not doing the opposite, you know. So you want to be informed 
on life change and information. You want to change your particular thoughts. You don't want to go around doing 